Hi there, this is Simple Harmonic Motion Lesson 1, Displacement and Acceleration. So what is an oscillation? If you want to take some notes at any point and you need to pause, just please do so. So an oscillation is a repeated motion about a fixed point. This fixed point is known as the equilibrium position. It's where the oscillating object returns to once the oscillation stops. So the time period of an oscillation is the time taken for the object to perform one complete oscillation. So one way and then back, back to where it started, then the other way, back to where it started. So that's one full oscillation and the amount of time that that takes is called the time period. So the amplitude of an oscillation is equal to the maximum value of the displacement from the equilibrium position. So that would be the amplitude. And then the amplitude in the opposite direction. It says negative A. Sometimes it's not important. It's just indicating which direction you need to designate a direction as positive. Once you designate a direction as positive, the opposite direction will, of course, be negative. So frequency F in hertz is equal to the number of complete oscillations per second. And remember that frequency is 1 over the time period. Angular frequency omega in radians per second is given by omega is 2 pi f. And of course, frequency is 1 over the time period, so omega is also 2 pi over t. We should know this from circular motion. So many oscillating systems undergo a pattern of oscillation that is approximately the same as, uh, that known as simple harmonic motion that's there should be an s there that's known as simple harmonic motion so some examples that'd be a mass hanging from the end of a spring so that would be simple harmonic molecular oscillations if you've done electric fields you might have done the questions where you have to calculate the force that acts on electrons due to charges and what they do they oscillate very quickly incidentally a pendulum or a swing you know pushing a child on a swing can be designated as simple harmonic a ruler oscillating on the end of a bench so if you hang a ruler over a bench like a school bench or a, ta uh, a table and hit the end that can be simple harmonic oscillation of a guitar violin string so musical instruments, tides, and lastly, breathing. So the pattern of SHM, or simple harmonic motion, is the same as the side view of an object moving at a constant speed in a circular path. It's quite a lot of information here. Hopefully this graphic will help. So the amplitude of the oscillation is equal to the radius of the circle. And at the equilibrium position, this point, the oscillating mass is at equilibrium. And the mass is moving, a bit of information, the mass is moving at its greatest speed as it passes through the equilibrium position, which means it's got maximum kinetic energy. So at the amplitude this top bit and this bottom bit. You'll notice that the mass is actually changing direction. So the speed at that point is actually zero. So what would be greatest at that point is the acceleration as the mass is about to change direction. And finally, the time period is the amount of time taken for the mass to complete one full oscillation. So from where it starts, so if we started from, say, this top position, 
goes all the way down, all the way back up. So the time it takes to complete that oscillation is the time period. Bit more information then. So I'm going to use a pendulum as an example. So a pendulum, that would be the equilibrium position. That would be the amplitude. And that would be the amplitude, but in the opposite direction. I'll call that x equals zero. So just a few things. At x equals zero, the speed is a maximum. That's its fastest point, the equilibrium position. The amplitude, the velocity is, uh, is zero. But the acceleration is a maximum. At both sides. One would be negative, but acceleration at this point is also a maximum. Velocity is zero. Then in terms of energy, you know the equations for kinetic energy. So at the equilibrium position, the kinetic energy, half mv squared. If you've got maximum velocity, maximum speed, then that would be a maximum. The potential energy would be a minimum. At the extremes at the amplitudes, the kinetic energy, as you probably already imagined, would be zero. And the potential energy at each side would be a maximum value. The same applies for the oscillating mass, the block, on the previous slide. So we'll need to bear that in mind as we move forward. We will look at that in more detail later on. So the conditions required for SHM. So when an object is performing simple harmonic motion, its acceleration is proportional to its displacement from the equilibrium position. So acceleration is proportional to X. And its acceleration is directed towards the equilibrium position. So mathematically, it can be written as acceleration is equal to minus kx. Where k is a constant and the minus sign indicates that the acceleration and displacement are always acting in opposite directions. On the next slide, I'll give you the equation for simple harmonic motion. So acceleration variation of SHM equation. So we said earlier that the, or a moment ago, that the acceleration is directly proportional to negative x. And there's some kind of constant in there. On the previous slide we said acceleration equals minus kx. So acceleration equals minus kx. And the constant is omega squared. So that's the equation. So remember, omega is equal to 2 pi f, or 2 pi over t, which we wrote down earlier. And we can plot this on a straight line. So if we plot this on the y-axis, and displacement on the x-axis, the minus omega squared is the gradient. So we have a graph that looks like this, negative gradient. Plus zero passes through the origin. That comes up quite often on examination style questions. So it will give you a blank axis and ask you to sketch the graph. So what we're going to do now is do a couple of questions using this equation that I've got a, a box around. So acceleration is minus omega squared x. And please remember that omega is 2 pi over t, the time period. Or omega is 2 pi f. And remember that omega is measured, the angular, angular frequency or angular speed is measured in radians per second. So let's move on. So let's pause, have a go at this. So body circulating vessel gem is a period of 1.2 seconds in amplitude of 3 centimetres, calculates frequency and maximum acceleration. So the frequency is simply 1 over the time period. So 1 divided by 1.2, which gives a frequency of 5 over 6 hertz, or 0 0.83 recurring hertz. Then to get the acceleration, 
We need to use minus omega squared x. So we've got minus 2 pi over t. So we can do 2 pi divided by the time period 1.2. Make sure you square this value. And then multiply it by the by the amplitude of 3 centimeters. Remember what we talked about earlier is the maximum acceleration occurs at the amplitude. So that gives us an acceleration value of 0 0.82 meters per second squared. And if you want, you can say that it's negative. It just means that it's acting in the opposite direction to the displacement. Let's move on to the next bit. So displacement equation of simple harmonic motion. So the basic one that I'll give you, the displacement is equal to A cos omega t. A being the amplitude. So we could write x equals A cos 2 pi ft. Or we can have displacement is A cos 2 pi over the time period times t. You also need to know, very important, is that your calculator, when using these equations, must be in radian mode. So, on most calculators, you would press shift and then mode, and then you'll get a selection, probably deg, rad, gra, fix, scientific, normal, and what you want to do is press radian mode. Once you've done in an exam, once you've done with radian mode, you should always put your calculator back into degree mode. Okay, so be careful with that, radian mode. Let's try a question then. So if you want to pause, have a go at this one, then I'll take you through the answer. So for this one, the displacement, x is equal to a cos omega t. And we're going to use 2 pi f for omega times time. And let's put our numbers in. So x is equal to a. So the amplitude is 5 millimeters. So 5 times 10 to the minus 3. Meters multiplied by cos. And then 2 pi times the frequency of 40, times time 1.5 milliseconds, so 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Remember, calculator must be in radian mode. And that gives the displacement equal to 4.6 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, or 4.6 millimeters. Then we need to do the acceleration. Remember that acceleration is minus omega squared x. So we need to do minus 2 pi times 40. Square this value. And then multiply by the displacement, the 4.6 millimeters, 4.6 times 10 to the minus 3. Which gives us an acceleration of minus 95 meters per second squared. Hopefully that's okay. Please remember, radian mode. The radian mode, you, for this equation, the acceleration is minus omega squared x. You don't need radian mode. It's only when you've got a trigonometric function in there. So if there's a cause, it must be in radians. Let's do one more example. So a very similar question. So if you got the last one wrong, this one you should get right. Same technique. Let's pause and have a go. A body oscillating with simple harmonic motion has time period of 0 0.02 seconds and amplitude of 7 millimetres. Calculate its displacement and acceleration 2 milliseconds after it reaches its maximum displacement. So just a bit of extra information actually. The question it says after it reaches its maximum displacement. Because the equation, the x equals 
A cos omega T only applies if you start timing the oscillation at the amplitude at t equals zero seconds. If you start timing from the equilibrium position at t equals zero seconds, you actually have to use this equation. Most A-level syllabuses now do not have this. this. This used to be on the syllabus. You used to have to know this. But I just don't want you getting confused by when it says after it reaches its maximum displacement. So essentially, this equation only works when you start timing at the maximum displacement at the amplitude. Let's do the question then. So displacement, x equals a cos omega t. So we need to do the amplitude. So 7 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Multiply by cos. Omega this time is going to be 2 pi over t. So 2 pi divided by the time period. 0 0.02 seconds. Multiply by the time. We're looking at 2 milliseconds. So 2 times 10 to the minus 3. So that gives a displacement. of 5.7. times 10 to the minus 3 meters or 5.7 millimeters the full number you should use in the next calculation I'm just going to do it to three significant figures so the acceleration is minus omega squared x and for omega I'm going to use 2 pi over 2 so I've got 2 pi minus 2 pi over the time period 0 0.02 make sure I square that value and then multiply by the 5.66 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. And that gives an acceleration value of minus 559 meters per second squared. So that's the end of the lesson. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.